Hey guys, it's MJ, the student at Tree, and we're going to be talking about the time value of money. It's chapter 2 in course CT1, and a very easy way to get your head around the core idea of this chapter is to answer the following question. Would you rather have $10 today or $10 tomorrow? And the answer, well, I think what most of us would say is we'd want the $10 today. Now the interesting question comes if I say to you, do you want $10 today or $11 tomorrow? And some of you will say, well some of you will opt for the $11 tomorrow and some of you will opt for the $10 today. But what is the true value of uh, tomorrow's value? Like how much should tomorrow be so that you are indifferent between the amount of money that you get today. And that's what the time value of money seeks to answer. It kind of seeks to answer how much is money worth as it changes throughout time. And there's two, well, the core thing that you use to calculate this is interest. And there's two types of models. There's the simple interest model and there's the compound interest model. The simple interest model isn't really used in real life whereas the compound model is. What it's basically saying, or what these models here are saying, is that the time value of money is equal to a function of interest and time. So the greater the interest is, uh, the more money is going to be worth in the future, and it's a value of time. The more time you have, the more the money is going to be worth. Now, you have interest when you project money forward, and you have discounts when you're bringing money back. And this is where actuarial science gets a little bit tricky because we're going to be introducing this thing here called VN, which is the discounting factor. And what VN does is it discounts, so let's say um, we have our $11 uh, tomorrow, we go V1 if N is within days, and that would give us the, the value of money for today. It is a little bit tricky, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you what the definition is of the effective rate of interest and what is the effective rate of discount. The effective rate of interest over a given time period is the amount of interest a single initial investment will earn at the end of the time period, expressed as the proportion of the initial amount. And the effective rate of discount over a given time period is the amount of interest a single initial investment will earn at the start of the time period expressed as a proportion of the final amount. Now if that didn't make any sense to you then what I recommend is you go to this website called acted.co.uk and you purchase, they have these great um, books called Combined Material Packs, there's one on CT1. Get that, start reading that and start doing some examples. But essentially, to get the time value of money done, and we'll see this later in the chapters, is you're going to be drawing some timelines. You're going to have some money here. You're going to have some money there. And this money is going to be worth more than that money there. And that little bit in between is the effect of the interest. And yeah, that is a little introduction to chapter two. It is a difficult concept. Um, I remember I struggled a lot with this when I was first introduced to it. And... The whole D and how it relates to this and it, it does get tricky. So be patient with your mind while well, it takes time to, to get used to this. But um, yeah, you do this so often in actuarial science that it becomes like second nature to you. So study hard and get that resource, like I said, if you're serious about passing the actuarial exams, you definitely need it. But otherwise, if you're also serious about passing these exams, subscribe because I will be making just little introductory videos on the various chapters of CT1. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.